Welcome my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peeps, my peoples, peep squad is in the building, baby. We going all the way to top, to the top, to the top, baby, and bring others with us. Let's get it, peep squad. Let's do this. Married to Medicine season one, episode three. I've been keeping up with the show, but it's going down. It's with Shanice. Shanique and basically her situation that's going down with her husband Robert basically dropping the beans and saying that Aisha, you know, husband Larry was out here messing with Dr. Smith for a long time and their relationship was going back and forth. And, you know, they are stirring the pot and they are starting trouble. And they said it on a syndicated show that Larry, you know, when he had a little off time with, you know, Aisha. Um, he went back to Dr. Smith and they was trying to work things out. So it kind of makes sense why he ain't trying to have no kids yet. He's like, you know, he's still off there dipping and dabbing right now. He's faithful. That's what it seems. But Robert is messy throwing down the business because Shanique, she didn't even know what was going on. And so her husband, Robert, told her Robert liked to run his mouth. And basically, he don't give a shit about Larry. He, his like, his loyalty, his alliance is with Dr. Smith. I was like, mm, what's going on? And Iman, she wants to bring her father in the building. And she called him, and he act like he didn't even want to see her. He's probably embarrassed. He's probably ashamed. But Imani, he probably don't want to come on camera. Like, he want to do it off camera. He don't want everybody to know who he is and all this other stuff. Even though people could probably look it up. But he don't want to be on camera. Mm. And then we see what's going on with Brittany. Brit, Brittany is having some situation. She needs to find a house ASAP and bring her kids back to California with her because her, her husband is out there with the kids and he's just like, yo, we need a place to stay. We need a place to go, baby. And he was like, you need to do something out the city and he don't want no shack. So they're going to be spending a pretty penny on a house. I was like, ding and we see what's going on with jasmine she wants to be barbie she wants to look like barbie act like barbie but inside she has some deep issues or she wanted to point out that the ladies have deep issues i was like okay i'm reloaded what's good what's going on so here we go with dr brett she basically her husband is in real estate and she lives in california and he lives in he lives in florida orlando and everything and basically you know she wants him to move there he wants to move there but right now it seems like dr Brittany is basically taking her time and she ain't really moving fast enough and she don't really have an idea what house to look for in what area because now her husband's finally telling her that he don't want to live in a city he want to live near close to her job or blase in the third I'm like okay we'll see you know what's going on Brittany's having a good time in California she's having a good time in LA in that nice house with the pool she's chilling she's living a life while her husband is back there in Orlando taking care of the kids working I guess he does real estate but she said he could do his job in any state and basically it kind of means that he don't need to show up or be there or be present so he can do everything online you know facetime so she's paying for two places maybe he got a little income coming through too as well but she do misses her kids but she's living her best damn life and she didn't have no issues growing up her issue but she wanted to be dark and have more kinkier hair i feel you girl this oh everybody has an issue everybody has a problem but i'm so glad they did bring up colorism but colorism especially is out there especially in and you know california la everywhere all over the world colorism is a problem tv colorism is a problem but she kind of have like a dense idea of about what's going on but you know um i was just like okay we'll do it and so here we go with this mess right here this mess is just way too much i'm just like hey so we got this situation going on with none other than aisha basically she finally got her husband to take her to the hospital to take her to you know trying to have a baby basically they need to have sex and more sex and more sex and more sex and all that other good stuff and you know the doctor didn't really scare her but she gave her the same information that dr simone gave her but dr simone was like being very real with this she wasn't all sweetening up and making nice baby you 39 you need to already have been pregnant why are you still taking birth control but she's gonna stop taking my birth control should have been stop taking your birth control pills if you wanted to have a baby like what's going on what's cracking lacking i'm just like come on miss me with this craziness i don't think larry wants to have a kid i think larry is basically gonna find another woman that is more fertile to have kids with 
That's what it seems like. I don't know. But Larry was like, "We, sh you should have never even went to Robert and Shanique's party at all because, you know what, if you're going to invite, you know, Dr. Smith and bring her there, then we don't need to be there. And basically, he was like, we don't need that drama in our life. But he doesn't want his wife to find out that, you know, he might have been doing something shady back in the day, even though it was like six years ago. But, you know, he was trying to get back with Dr. Smith and he was all up in and they have some open laps in their relationship that Larry was dating both of them at the same time, hitting it at the same time doing it at the same time by Aisha she won <laughs> she's victorious in the situation so I was just like mm -mm -mm. and Brett is basically giving Aisha some good information since your husband might not want to have a baby with you because if he did he would already got you pregnant and the excuse that he's using ain't good I was like mm. and so here we go with the shady doctors well I don't know if we're gonna call them shady doctors because basically the reason why I think you know Robert and Shanique is is shady is because you know inviting Dr. Smith to you know um Robert's birthday party when she knew Aisha was gonna show up you know and you know that's, that's some kind of shit right there. That's shady because no woman wants to be at a party where, you know, their ex is their ex lover's lover is there. I mean, their lover's ex is at the party. You know, nobody wants to be there. Nobody, I mean, nobody wants to go to a party with that type of tension. You want to go there, chill and have a good time. But Robert's telling us that Rob, Robert's telling us that Larry's been out here dipping and dabbing and Shanique is telling us. Shanique is telling us that she gave Aisha a heads up and a warning. I was like, you gave her a heads up and a warning? Then why did she act so surprised? Why did she cry? Why was she having an emotional breakdown because she seen how beautiful Dr. Smith was? Like, yo, please don't let that be the truth. Like, if Shanique actually told Aisha, Aisha, what really happened? Like, you know, she, that, you know... Dr. Smith is invited to, you know, Robert's birthday party and she got to the birthday party and was acting up. But then why did you call her insecure, Shanique? Shanique, why didn't you just say like you knew she was coming? Because it seemed like Aisha was just like looking at Shanique's was like, Shanique, like, why is she here? You invited her? But if she already knew the heads up, then something's going on. Somebody's lying. And we got to get down to the bottom of it. Because right now, you know, Dr. Robert, you and your wife look fugazi. But right now, it seems like Aisha's looking fugazi. Aisha's looking fugazi if she already knew that the woman was going to be there. She didn't have to show up. She didn't have to stay tuned. She didn't have to come in. She didn't have to go. I am just like, yo. Mm-mm-mm. Shadiness. And so they go out for a dinner because they have date, they have date night. And basically, you know, Shanice, she's there chilling, but Robert is telling her that he didn't like what was going on at his birthday party, that he was feeling a certain type of way. He was just like, yo, what was going on with Aisha? And she basically, you know, Shanique, she told him what was good. She was like, Aisha was showing up, showing up and showing out, basically acting like, you know, she was all heartbroken because, you know, Dr. Smith was there and all this other stuff. But she didn't mention to her husband that she gave her the heads up. And then her husband basically spilled the beans talking about Larry was out here double dipping. And Robert is like, well, if anybody needs to be mad, they need to be mad at me because I invited Dr. Smith. You know, she was at, she was at your um, baby shower with Shanique. She was, you know, I went to medical school with her. We graduated together, so what's the big deal? So, um, something just don't seem right. Uh, the editing is very wrong. So, he's giving his two cents, but boy, he is dropping... He is throwing Larry under the bus, boy. He is going to be the drama queen. He is going to be the star of the show. You go ahead, Robert. Snitching, snitching, snitching. I feel you. Robert was like point blank, period. He was cheating. He was he was double dipping. It overlaps. I'm positive. I'm sure. And he's knowing, it. He's knowing that this is being filmed and Larry's going to find out and it's going to cause a problem. And his wife is going to go back and do what she needs to do and start trouble too. Basically, throw it up in Asia face. Asia face that, you know, shit is all messed up in her relationship with Larry. Mm, mm, mm. The dirty. And then we get on to Noelle. Noelle, basically, she owns her own business. She got it going on. She got a practice. Western medicine, regular medicine. She has, she has all types of medicine, you know. She's doing yoga, and basically, she she's talking about anxiety and having panic attacks, and she had that, and basically, she didn't want to be a pill popper, so she has chose yoga to help her. She's very smart, too, and she's very nice. She got it going on, and she understands the realness. She's fucking woke. 
straight up and down. So moving on to that, she she's trying to teach her patient some shit. Her patient is like, I don't care what you're talking about. I want some Xanax and I get 10 Xanax. She was like, I don't think it was going to be as bad as it was. But, you know, I hurt myself. I had anxiety. You know what would help? Some Xanax. I need some Xanax. See, people get hooked on drugs quick, fast, in a hurry. They don't have to be young. They don't have to be old. They can be all ages and all races. So be careful of the medication that you take because you become hooked. You become addicted. Your body comes to it. You know, your, your body just builds on your body can't live without it, and then your body starts to crack you start going through them withdraw withdrawals and shit like that and it's crazy because they prescribe medication all the time they get you hooked the next time you come in there looking for medication they thinking you a drug addict or you're a liar but basically they make these medication to 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 go right towards the euphoria and everything of our body to make us feel like it's just like this, like we in heaven, like we're walking on, you know, we're on top of the world with these drugs and, and situations. That's why a lot of people choose not to use drugs. So this shit is crazy. This lady straight up addicted, letting us know, and she just want her pills. She, she was like, yo, can I get 10 of my anxiety pills? So, you know, the drug companies are making billions of dollars. It's so, it's so important that we go healthy and we go natural and we try everything that we can before we get addicted to certain medication or depend on medication because our bodies are ingenious sometimes i probably said that the wrong way so we get on to imani imani is chilling imani is chilling imani's chilling she's with her husband basically she's letting her husband know that she wants to see a father she want a father back in her life blas in the third her husband was like i don't think it's a good idea you know i don't know what type of crazy what type of you know heartbreak that you're gonna be bringing us like i know you want a storyline baby but this is too much bringing your father you done found him now you're bringing him on the show you want to bring him to the house he's 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 not with it but he's gonna support his wife and his and iman imani iman she really wants to you know meet her father make and maybe have a relationship or even oh either the door's gonna be closed the doors are gonna be open but she wants to come to a conclusion she wants it she wants to stop wondering stop guessing about the situation i don't blame her i think she should do it and see how it works out her father she texts her father um that she wanted to see him as soon as possible whenever he's free and he goes let me think about that because he's probably going through some things he probably feel embarrassed he probably feel like a letdown it's probably going to be heartbroken for him he's going to be heartbroken because he's going to see what he missed out on he's going to see that his daughter came to be a wonderful person and he's going to hurt him or break him away he was like see she was so much better without me i made the right decision probably go drink again and he probably has so much guilt and so much shame of what he did and then facing the music a lot of people don't like to face the music shit it's hard to face the music especially when you know you was wrong there's no excuses but there are excuses but there really isn't but there are so he was addicted to drugs and everything that went on in that scene and what he went through back in the day at that time you know what i mean because you know we have to overcome a lot shit ain't easy so that's why we need our reparations baby so um and then plus coming on camera, if he knows about that situation, might not feel like it's authentic or genuine why his daughter wants to meet up, why his daughter wants to meet up with him. So we'll see what happens with this situation. I was just like, damn. So we'll find out, baby. I wonder, it's almost like, you know, um, Dr. Simone's situation, looking for her father too as well. I guess they're taking it right out the handbook, baby. And there she goes. She looks beautiful. I think I think she's beautiful. I like that bald head, boy. She be rocking it. She look good. And we got the two ladies together. We got Shanique. And we got Shanique. And we have Jasmine. And Jasmine's in the business. Business. She's in the business. Like she's doing a damn thing. Her husband making all types of money. He got it going on. And basically, she thinks that she's a Barbie and all this other stuff. She kind of she's kind of dips. And she seems like she's on Xanax herself. But I have no idea. But she's getting ready to throw a Barbie party about to have a good time and they and they just like to have fun they like to look beautiful and have fun they live in a life baby while their husband's at work and this is the party you know jasmine's house or jazz her house was nice it was popping it looked good you know all the you know um brit was like all this pink makes me want to throw up it's like pep and bismo baby it's disgusting and none of the ladies really agreed to dressing up like barbie because basically um, the invitation was dress as your favorite character of Barbie. You know what I'm saying? And other ladies, not even her best friend, Shanique, she didn't even dress up as a Barbie. She said she's the Barbie of Shanice. <laughs> or Shanique, <laughs> whatever these ladies' name are. And basically, you know, um, Joelle, you know, 
Joelle, she was not even trying to. She was like, I'm myself. And Imani was like, I'm myself too as well. Don't worry about it. I ain't no Barbie. And also, <laughs> Britt was like, I ain't no Barbie either. So they didn't come in character. And so, you know, they're joking around talking about the dollar store. And, you know, Jasmine's like, I would never go to the dollar store. <laughs> Not in my not in my vocabulary, not in my listing. I can afford better. I got better. And so this is when Aisha and um Brett they sit down to talk alone and Aisha she basically tells Brett what's going on with Larry not wanting to really conceive or have a baby with her and all the difficulties that she's gone through. And so then Brett was just like, yo, listen, I think he don't want to have a kid with you. Find out the reason because if it's if he's talking about it's about his money, he makes well over the amount to take care of you and the baby. So find out what's the deep rooted issue. And, you know, Brett talks about, you know, she got to do something with her husband and the kids because they want to come home and she got to find a place. But she's cool with them being away, really. But and she's not emotional either. She She's a very strong woman, woman. So we get on to the dinner. So we got Jasmine basically asking the question, like, what do you think about the theme party? And, you know, Joelle, she went in. She went in. Noel, Joelle, she went in. She went in, baby. She was like colorism and everything that we got to go through, everything that we face, everything that happens to us as a people. And um, imaging is the worst thing in the world because you get programmed. And, you know, I had to deal with my daughter. She had colorism problem. She didn't want to identify as black. She wanted a white barber. She wanted her hair dyed blonde. So I had to do a lot of reprogramming because imagery, imagery that you see Im images all the image that you see out there really, you know, cha can change people. Yes, they can. It can, and um, and actually using signs and pictures and stuff like that. That's how they program you the most, especially with music and and. But when they're showing you images of different people, and and you see this all the time when you turn on the TV, when you turn on Instagram, YouTube, you know, and all the the pictures that are out on IG when you watch movies and TV shows what you what is the standard of beauty all the ladies really agree that like you know they have to try to compete you know to try to be beautiful because nobody really cared about them because they were black women and they were biracial women too as well like they was trying to figure out what the white man wanted what he thought was attractive because what he thought was like the god center of things and I, and I think when they say that it's because you know the caucasian male can the ones that are in power can control you know networks tvs websites and blogs where they can put the image that they think is beautiful out there and broadcast it to the world and have everybody agree especially like people magazine you know um all the magazines that people used to look at that used to have delivered at their house or go in the grocery store and read the magazine papers but that shit is obsolete so now it's commercial imagery you know ads and things like that so you know um She's basically making a good point. And all these ladies, even Aisha, she had a problem too as well with, you know, colorism and people not thinking that she's beautiful and basically having problems and, and, and actually accepting herself because there's a lot of colorism and she wasn't made to feel beautiful because of her skin and her hair. And Imani said the same thing too as well. You know, she had to go through the same thing with the with image with images that are put out there and how, you know, the standard of beauty is not the black woman and black women have to go through so much to get attention and even the biracial women are agreeing and she talks about you know have dealing with teenage girls that have eating disorders because they want to be a size 16 they want to go like a barbie because of you know some of the first images that they do see on tv is barbie doll the barbie doll commercial commercials for christmas get a barbie doll you know everybody holding a barbie doll so now you think that this is the most beautiful thing in this world so you want to identify with it so when you don't look like it, it's a problem and so we'll see so noelle with her situation you know her daughter don't really look like her so her daughter wanted her daughter probably had issues because her mother has the straight hair and her mother has the really really fair skin that you some she she's very she's passable just like you know um brit she's very pass brit looks white to me she looks very passable but you know her problem was she didn't look like you know black people she wanted to look black she wanted kiki hair she wanted dark skin so her issue is totally different so she's disagreeing with noelle 
basically because you know it's not it's not the Barbie, but it's the image and it's what the Barbie represent. Because every guy will not every guy, but in the past you will see guys on TV shows doing interviews and guys will say, "I want my woman to look like a Barbie. I want to look like a Barbie doll." So that was the standard of beauty at one point in time, being the body a Barbie doll, and it still is. So these women are talking about the colorism that they go through because they don't look like the Barbie. And so we even have Jasmine basically say that you know she had a hard time growing up you know because she's biracial too as well and she wanted to look like a barbie and be like a barbie but you know she didn't and then she wasn't accepted in her community too as well and trying to compete with to look like the barbie and be the barbie and be you know white as she possibly could be but she wasn't and you know then she all then she went from that to saying that she wanted to look just like her sister i don't know how you wanted to look like your sister if you want to look like a barbie she was like me and my sister look different so you know they had that whole passionate situation so it is what it is and then we have the dinner meetup party with the dinner meetup party we have the ladies we have imani and we have you know britney there and basically they're there and they're with you know shanique and they're with shanice shanique and that they're, they're basically they end up talking about like what's going on with your girl Jasmine House, and you know you have Brett talking about it looks like it, it looks like Dynasty. You have Imani basically says it looks like a drug dealer's house. I was just like Imani, and it was so shocking. <laughs> it was so shocking to you know. Um, Shanique, she just looked like, oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. She just made that face like, no, you did not just say that. Like, she was just like, yo, how could you just say that? I was just like, yo, she went there. And, you know, all this is going to get back to, you know, <laughs> this is all going to get back to Jasmine and it ain't going to be a good thing. I was like, okay, um, this show is okay. But she made that face just like that when she... Um, what Imani said, they look like a drug dealer's house because Imani and Aisha was basically checking out, you know, um, Jasmine's husband's car, his Bentley in the house and saying he cannot afford this on a doctor's salary. He, he must got a real hustle. And so then, you know, Shanique, she was just like basically quiet. And then Shanique was like, you know what? Let's talk about something else and so that's when you know Imani was like yo listen what's up with you and Aisha you guys over you guys not friends what's going on and she was like well let's let's talk about Asia you know what the problem is I did tell her that you know Larry's ex was going to be there and so basically that's it so everybody's like what's going on why the hell is Aisha lying like that so we'll get to it peace and out one love